Hi, maybe you're looking for a day pack like I am, and I'm surrounded by a few friends here. My outdoor research pack, uh, daylight, uh, small pack, REI Trail 25, and uh, my son has a Coda Pack C pack, all with various features. Of course, I have my REI Crest Trail 70, it's the large. Maybe there's something missing here. Um, what I'm looking for and what I'm going to review today is a pack that would help me go on longer distances. I'm planning on going into the North Country this summer and have some pretty long uh, days ahead, 18 miles, 5,500 feet of elevation. I wanted to go with a little more comfort. None of these bags has a proper hip belt. So what's missing today, what we're gonna talk about is the missing link for me comparing the Osprey Stratos 34 to the Gregory Zulu 30. Two packs that are similar in some ways and very different in others. So I'm going to load these up for a, a kind of a summer day hike when I'm loading up on the lighter side but want that comfort of the weight on the hips. And we'll also load them up more like this with a kind of a full pack and see how we can uh, fit gear into them and how they measure up against each other. So let's look at the packs head to head. Um, one of the reasons I'm looking at both of these packs is because of the key feature that's common to both. And that is these mesh backs that leave um, air between the pack and your back. But also, as I mentioned, the real proper full hip belt. Something, uh, again, very common to both is notice the, the smooth, continuous um, pattern in both of these across the hip belt and all the way up the back. So we've got the Osprey here in green, Gregory Zulu 30 here in the red. Again, very continuous and smooth. Um, both have uh, hip pockets. I'm going to comment more on those later. Nice substantial um, webbing uh, with clips. They both have full adjustment um, in height, so you want to get the right size. I'll talk a little bit about um, size later. I'll also talk about some of the features on these straps. So on the Osprey, they have their uh, stow and go system that has two uh, shock cords, one on the, the uh, shoulder strap and one near the hip. I'll show you later how that can um, easily take a trekking pole. On the um, moving to the Gregory, there is a sunglass uh, shock cord here to put your glasses or sunglasses in here and get keep those handy, um, as well as a clip for the water bottle that we'll get into. Moving to the sides, they both have. Uh, as you would expect, pockets, somewhat stretchable. We'll talk a little bit about uh, more about that. Uh, they both have uh, uh, cinching straps that can be run either outside, as shown on this side here, or inside with this little opening here. So they both do that at the bottom. The Osprey uh, straps are thicker. Gregory a little narrower, I think, for the purpose, these are fine. On the front, they both have the uh, place for ice pick or trekking poles, as you saw at the introduction. They're done a little bit differently here. This one has a cinching where you press a button. This is more of a, a one-handed um, operation for tightening, and then another piece to pull for loosening. Not a major difference there. Um, they do, they both have upper um, cinching straps to tighten things up. You'll see that when we load it up. They're done a little bit differently. Notice how this attach point is done here. And that's gonna cause me a little problem later when I demonstrate putting a tent in this spot. Um, something unique about the Gregory on these straps is that they 
uh, designed these clips to be opposite male and female. And so you can do creative things with these upper straps, if you like, by clipping them together. So maybe if you've got a light load in here, you can uh, either just use these to tighten up that load way at the top, or you could even attach something to this, or perhaps while you're traveling, if you want to keep the straps neat, you could even tighten them on the back side. Speaking of neat, I'd, I'd say the Osprey in kind of the, the, the standing position really gets nice and compact and folds up nice and tightly. Their, their, uh, their weights are not very different, um, but the Gregory just is a little more bulky in that respect. Now let's move to, uh, to pockets. Start with the Gregory. So on the outside, we have the two side pockets, both very stretchy. We have one outside stretchy pocket that's common to a lot of backpacks. At the very bottom, the pocket opens into this area that's reinforced. So if you have something a little pointy, um, it's not going against the stretchy material. This does extend if you've got something bigger, and you'll see later we can put rather large things in there. Uh, there's one outside zipped pocket, this one, and a U-shaped top pocket with one inside pocket with key clasp and more space on the inside, and then a cavernous inside. Cavernous. We'll see that in a little bit. Got a spot where you can uh, attach a water bottle in a couple of ways. There's a Gregory system. I have uh, Camelbacks that will connect. Now let's move on to the Stratos 34 from Osprey. This really intrigues me. Um, lots of options here, like a mini backpack. You've got uh, what I'm clamping together here are the bottom straps for connecting small tent, sleeping pad. You've got this small pocket down at the bottom, which does have a separator uh, spot in here. I really like this because even on a day hike, when you want to grab things and have different spots for things, this intrigues me and I like the idea of that. There is some flexibility to this uh, separator. Um, if you remove some toggles on the inside, it can go all the way down and take up the full volume of the back. Whoops. So if I uh, can get in there. Okay, I've got the toggles on. Let me show you those toggles. Let me, let's start, keep from the outside in. You've got this back pocket here. This is the one that many call useless. <laughs> and I don't think it's entirely useless. Interestingly, the pocket is actually as deep as this. It's useful if you are not putting a lot on the inside. However, when you pack a lot on the inside, that takes up the space and then it really tightens up. So I understand the gripes. Um, if it works for you that on a day hike, you've got just a little stuff in the main compartment and you want to put a bunch of things out here, then that might work for you. So keep that in mind. There's a small pocket here, small and narrow. Some have said that could be used for glasses or something like that. There's a pocket at the very top. That's a mesh pocket. That's where you have the key clamp uh, in, in the Osprey. And then finally, the, oh, looky there. The, when the straps are uh, connected at the top, you can't open the zipper all the way. So if you want to open all the way, you have to undo those. Again, a minor thing, but if it, that's a big deal for you, then it could be a big deal. Let me try to show you these toggles. There you go. So if I undo those, and frankly, I would just keep these 
undone. Because if you have something in that lower pocket, big deal, it'll use up the space in the lower pocket as you will. And then this main compartment will use the space as the stuff in there does. However, now if you look, boom. See, that's the separator coming down into the very bottom. And at that point, you just wouldn't use that bottom zipper anymore. And you use the main compartment. Is it cavernous? I'm just going to zip that up so this isn't wide open. Let's see, is it cavernous? You have to hold it just at the right angle so you can see. So, wait and see. And uh, we'll talk about the cavernous aspect. Now let's compare bladders into the Osprey Stratos 34. No problem. Let's do a little clipping. Keep it up at the top. Okay, hmm, that's interesting. This pocket is kind of in the middle of all that. Oh, look at that. We gotta get the hose through here. Oh, looky here. So I attach that. Wow, that's pretty tight. Everyone talks about that, and they are not kidding. Very tight. And if you look, the angle of it is kind of in the wrong direction. The slot is done in a way that the tube wants to come down. So, watch me fight this. I might need to put it in fast motion. If I take this back, if I don't rip it, kind of went on the wrong side of this, because I'm going to go to that side. And then what I found is running it behind under the uh, load lifter. And then you can go down one of these, and that's fine. So um, I call that a fail. I think an intern maybe did this and picked the direction wrong or something. Now let's look at the Gregory. These are three liters, by the way. connect that easily enough. Let's see how difficult it is. Let's see, I like to have it on my right side. Uh, let's see if I can get this through here. Oh, look at that. That was pretty easy. And guess what? They have one on the other side also. Very handy. And um, nice little feature. Again, not a reason to buy a pack alone, but it's kind of cool. You've got a little clip here that holds the um, the tube very nicely and I, I found that I don't even want to put it through this guy because then it makes the tube too tight so when I unclip it here it goes right into my mouth. One thing I want to point out before we load it up is now that the, the uh, hydration is in there I never did call this one cavernous but The, it's hard to tell, but the uh, hydration bladder is really starting to take up some valuable space. And furthermore, the curve on the Osprey here is more substantial. Furthermore, there's a rib on the inside of the pack that you can see that reflection It's going in here almost like a V that's they wanted so much space on your back that I think they're taking up a little too much valuable space in the pack itself. The V shape on the Zulu is not quite as much. Now to load up the packs with some gear. We're going to start with a lighter load and go to the heavy load. Okay, we're in day pack mode. So we're going to have some, uh, some extra layers, 
uh, and some food. This is just representing a bunch of bunch of stuff in here. Might have some rope for some kind of situation. Ditty bag with compass, uh, headlamp, um, other small supplies, let's say. When I'm going out with a group, I like to bring my bigger um, first aid kit. It's also a bit of a survival kit. There are some Mylar blankets and uh, waterproof matches and things like that in here. TP, uh, bio wipes, and cat hole spade. Gotta bring that. Um, Sawyer water filtration. And rain jacket. So, these should very easily go in these packs. I've already got the bladder in on the Osprey. Why don't we use that bottom uh, pocket? Like I was kind of saying, have that uh, first aid kit very handy there. So the materials can go to the bottom. Certainly want to keep the raincoat handy. Got the ditty bag. Let's see. Maybe that ditty bag can go in this this uh, pocket here. Oh, the way. But probably the rope can. Keep that hand. Okay, that's pretty full now. I said on lighter loads this would be usable, right? Let's see if it is. Oh, I put those clothes in here and already that's tightening up a bit. Let's see if we can get the uh, rain jacket in here. I can, but now this outer pocket is quite tight. And the inside is now pretty, pretty packed up. But I can keep, <laughs> if I unload in the morning, I'm gonna put that in first. And then that leaves my ditty bag and water filtration near the top. Again, of course we have food. And interestingly enough, as wide as this opens, when you start putting things at the top and you think you've got the space, this zipper gets pretty tight. Now mind you, this was a this was my day hike load. And you can see I'm having a fiddle with this zipper. Now I better cinch this up. Hmm, not much to cinch up in this bag. I'll do that so it's neat. And you can see how th this works. I won't spend the time on that. This is day pack mode. And now this pack is uh, loaded up quite a bit. I might not always need as much as I've got here, but it's to demonstrate a reasonable amount for day hiking um, in mild weather, not even winter weather with a lot of extra layers in here. Um, now let's do the same for the Zulu 30. Okay, same gear in the Zulu 30. You might have a, that bit of a small disadvantage of not having the lower pocket. So, um, let's just say I'm putting extra layers at the bottom. I'm going to want to keep first aid near the top, of course. I think I'll put this in the outside pocket very easily. It's not loaded up yet, of course. Well, let's see. I don't need this handy, but uh, maybe I'll put this on the inside pocket. That will leave the outside pocket maybe for some food. And well, with the rest of the space, I've got the first aid kit, TP, and Sawyer system and my little ditty bag. Voila! That was very easy to get in, and you can see I've got a little room here. Now, I uh, I like to neaten up a pack. 
Notice that I'm pushing to compress and then pull. That'll stress the straps light, uh, light more lightly. Keep them uh, in good shape for you. So do the same here. And notice how easy it is to tighten these. Those lower ones, the way they're done. Like so. So this pack looks a little more lumpy. Got a little belly here with the, uh, the uh, rain jacket in there. Um, but you can already tell how easy that same load goes into the Zulu 30. Um, I haven't used the side pockets on either one really, and we haven't touched on the, uh, the hip pockets either. Now let's go to uh, uh, kind of an ultralight load and see how that looks. Now for an ultralight load. I am not an ultralight guy, but I've got some light things that I've added to what we just saw before, including an Aegis Max down um, the rectangular version. I have a review of that versus the, uh, the uh, mummy version. I've got a smaller, um, this is more of an ultralight first aid kit. I've got a Stanley um, kit with the backpacking stove. Again, not ultralight with a canister inside and on the outside. Climate uh, sleeping pad. Got the uh, Big Agnes, um, uh, what do I have, it's terrible. It's a great tent. The Fly Creek Ultralight 2, um, about two and a half pounds. And again, the rest is about the same. You might see I don't have a mess kit here, a um, couple other things, but this is just stuff taking up space um, this is extra for space. Let's just compare what this additional kit looks like. Is it feasible to take these bags on an ultralight? So I'm going to start with the Osprey. I'm going to give up on that bottom. It's released to the bottom. So I'm just going to start uh, loading at that very bottom. So I'm going to do I'm going to put the first aid kit on the outside. Let me show you what it's like to uh, kind of get this thing closed up. Okay, that didn't go too badly. I am struggling a bit on this side. I have to work it. You can see it. Okay, I got that closed. Got a little bit of room up here. A little bit of room, but I'm hitting all my gear on top of that little mesh bag. Your uh, water, your rain jacket too. So, definitely on an overnight, you want to have something like this. I got my little bag to throw over the over the branch for your bear hang. All right. Let's see. Do I have anything more to put on the inside? I hope not. Um, I'm sure to put this in first. This is my Tyvek pad for my big Agnes. Hmm. Now this does go all the way down to there if you work it. There we go. And I think I have space for that first aid kit. Oh boy, working it. Is this pocket useless? I got something in it. There. <laughs> okay. Couple more things. Let's get the, the cook kit. And I'm gonna put it in this one. So these are stretchy, right? Hmm. careful with that. Maybe I should have used this one to actually cinch around it. And uh, well, I think I can put this down. But let me just show you something. I did want to put something wrong here, like so. What happens if I extend this strap? I want to put something there. See the weight? Uh-oh. 
my stove's falling out the other side. If I try to get that in there, it's attached, so I gotta kind of force that. I hope you can see that. Again, this is attached hard to the bag. I'm not even gonna do it, because I'm really tight. I don't wanna rip that. The good thing is, this bag does offer the flexibility to put that tent the bottom. You get the picture. Now, except for my little dangly cooking stove here, it's a nice looking pack. Very tight. You also saw how I kind of struggled, and I didn't even get my, here, my rain jacket in this side, and I could certainly make this work. Could this go on an overnight? Yeah, okay, you will know what's next. Let's see how the Zulu does with the same kit. So again, always thinking what I don't need first. <laughs> Put in first. That includes the HMAX. I'm going to say clothes, placeholder, etc. So I can really jump down to the bottom. And now, uh, let's say we did that with good things, of course, compass and things, like, like, also going to hit that. Oh, yeah. Maybe I can get this on the inside cook it. Let's see how that is. And then, uh, this isn't even, well, there's one of my first aid kits, just representing stuff. I can get that in there, too. I'm going to open my raincoat. And then, I still have access to a new bag. Water filtration. I'll put my rope in here. Keep my first aid kit handy. Ah, my flying first aid kit in the top pocket. Don't let me forget my tent. Now look how you see on this. Look at this. Piece of cake with these zippers, right? And notice when I open it, things don't go flying out, but it's open and reveals things I need. The water filtration, the bigger first aid kit, my rain jacket. It's all right there. I'm gonna put the uh, footprint down here. Again, I'm using that uh, thicker base so that all the points are down that thicker material. That was easy. I could get another liter of stuff in here. Don't forget the tent. Now, before I put the tent in, I think I've got everything in here. Let's get things tightened up. Both sides. And before I tighten up the top on the tent side, I always want to keep the stakes out of the pocket so I don't mess that up. Wow, that, was, that goes in very easily, very stretchy. Demonstrate that again. Seeing that? Very stretchy. You just get that top open, everything goes in very nicely. Notice that difference that I pointed out on the Osprey. And I can cinch this up. It can, you can neaten it up like so. And there you have it. So that experience might speak for itself. Now I'm going to get the bags on. You can see them, how they look on. And I will summarize. Let's load up the Osprey. Notice the hip belts that I mentioned to you. These are right sized. I really wish that the uh, Zulu 30 was about like this, maybe a little more. Um, one downside to them being, you know, not so long around the front is that then the uh, pockets themselves are uh, a little more, um, a little smaller, um, but you can operate them with just one hand, which is hand, which is nice, handy. Uh, uh, and not nearly as spacious as the Zulu 30s. Get this properly done here. 
Uh, what else is interesting? Um, first of all, I mentioned that daylight. Don't mind that tag, but if you look back here, you can see the substantial daylight. Um, and I think it's too much. It takes away from space in the bag, as we pointed out earlier. Here is the proper stow and go system, the real deal. It's very, very easy to do while the pack is on. Go down here, you can stretch this longer, stretch this over like so. And it really allows some nice arm motion. Uh, it's very natural. I find this would be very useful in times when you're on the smooth trail and level trail. You don't really need the trekking poles. You want to just take a break and rather than hold them, you do this. So I like that feature a lot. Um, I think those are the major features for the Osprey 34. Here I am donning the Gregory Zulu 30. That does look tight already. So be careful about your sizing. I needed to go with the large extra large. The hip belt is on the really long side for that size. You can see this is ridiculous. If I keep this past its warranty period, I'll certainly cut these shorter and fuse them. You can kind of do that to neaten things up. It's got the nice load lifters, easily accessible. And yeah, it's a pretty nice look. I look back here and see the daylight between my back and the float system. So this is what Zulu looks like. Now I told you that this did not have the stow and go system, but with a little creativity, a little shock cord on here, and a little shock cord in a kind of a tube opening. Looky here. Stow and go on the Gregory. I'll call it my own name. I spelled it differently, so I don't have any uh, infringements. But a um, little creativity, and you can do things to your packs to make them do what you like. And that's a pretty cool, uh, I, I did like that feature. So I thought, let me try to create that. And then here's the uh, sunglass system. I'll try this. And then leave. This is supposed to go around and not doing this very well am i here we go like so that's the idea kind of cool uh i think i did i talk about the pockets they zip open very easily they also cavernous like the bag itself um this is an older phone of mine not a huge one but if that's important to you it does fit in without bending <laughs> very easily to close this you do need a second hand when it gets to a certain point it binds. Done. Very comfortable. The weight's on my hips. I can lighten this up for a day hike. And I'm looking forward to using this Gregory 30. So in conclusion, I think you know where I'm going for myself. Um, for many of the things that we looked at and for what is important to me, I'm going to stick with the Gregory. Uh, I found it much more useful. I found these straps to be more versatile, easier to use. Um, I found the big front pocket to be very handy. And even though there's kind of one main compartment on the top, it's very accessible. I really like the neatness of the Osprey uh, Stratos uh, 34. Um, it looks great, but I just didn't find it as usable as the Gregory Zulu 30. I uh, get nothing from either of these companies. I bought both to uh, try to find out what's best for me. I hope this has been helpful for you and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have.